Good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of the School of Electrical Engineering, Electronics and Computer Science at the University of Liverpool, I would like to welcome you all to our next Women in Technology webinar. My name is Munira Raja and I'll be your host for today's webinar. In today's talk, we are very delighted to welcome Dr. Dan San, who is an Associate Professor at the School of Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering at Queen's University Belfast. Dr. San obtained her bachelor's degree in materials engineering and a master's degree in mechanical engineering from Nanyang Technology University in Singapore. She subsequently achieved her PhD in mechanical engineering from the University of Southampton. She joined uh, Queen's University Belfast in 2014, where she was the first Asian female to obtain a permanent faculty position in the department in its 104 year history. Dr. Sun's primary research is focused on the development of novel multifunctional composite materials and their wide ranging applications. Dr. Sun has recently pioneered her research in the field of advanced thermoplastic based on composite materials with her scientific discoveries published in top journals. So for the talk today, um, Dr. Ta Sun Sun's title will be on pushing the boundaries, exploring the potential of composites in healthcare and aircraft technologies. This talk will be recorded and run for about 30 to 40 minutes, followed by questions at the end of the session. Please feel free to post your question in the comment section and we'll go through these at the end of the talk. So without further delay, I would like to hand over the virtual microphone and screen to Dan. OK, thank you very much. I hope everybody can hear me OK. Yeah. Yes, we can hear you. Oh, yeah. good. Yeah. First um, of all, yeah. Uh, as, again, a big thank you to the organizers for this kind invitation. And also, I'd like to thank all the audience for spending your time today uh, to, to come to this talk. So uh, the, the, the title of this talk is on the uh, looking at the potential of composite in healthcare technology and aircraft technologies. So for those who are not very familiar with Queen's University Belfast. If you could allow me a, a couple of minutes to provide a brief overview of my institution. Queen's is founded in 1845 and it holds the distinction of being the ninth oldest university in the United Kingdom. And it is also amongst the top 10 most beautiful historical universities in this country. Queen's is also a member of the prestigious Russell Group Universities and was ranked top 100 in the 2023 Times Higher Education Impact Rankings. In this slide, I'd like to take the opportunity to take you through my research journey that ultimately led me to my current role at Queen's University Belfast. Uh, as introduced by the organizer, uh, my academic journey actually began as a material scientist I earned my undergraduate degree in material science and engineering at Nanyang Technological University. Uh, I was specialized in design and fabrication of bioimplant materials. During my undergraduate study, I delved into my first research project, that is a final year project, which revolves around development and testing of a ceramic composite material for dental implant applications. During, uh, so, Later on, following my undergraduate study, I uh, pursued a PhD at Southampton. And my uh, doctoral research is mainly focused around tribology and the corrosion of a metal based implant material. And I was fortunate to have a very productive PhD journey, resulting in the publication of eight peer reviewed journals in reputable uh, journals. And notably, my PhD supervisor uh, secured a substantial 10 million pound grant and established a National uh, Advanced Tribology Center at Southampton at the time of my graduation. So that uh, offered me a fellowship opportunity upon my graduation, uh, which can potentially lead to a permanent lectureship. Uh, but around the same time, my husband also secured a permanent lectureship position at Queen's University Belfast, which was also a fantastic achievement for him. So while we were celebrating these successes, I also have to decide whether I should stay in Southampton for the fellowship or I need to relocate to Northern Ireland for a family commitment. 
So for me, it was an obvious decision. I chose to allocate to Northern Ireland without hesitation, uh, but it's, it's still a, a decision I've never regretted. Um, although it means I have to face a set of new, new challenges such as geographic constraints in terms of job search, and uh, maybe I have to start from scratch uh, in terms of my research. So the first job I secured uh, in Northern Ireland was a four-year industrial fellowship position at Ulster University in collaboration with AVX Limited, a company producing dielectric uh, semiconductor capacitors. And this was followed by a one-year postdoc position on microfluidic sensors and also on uh, atmospheric plasma processing. During this period, I faced the challenge of balancing these new research directions and also the demand of new motherhood as my new uh, two babies arrived during this period as well. So th th this was never easy and it does require a lot of dedication and not hard work. But I successfully completed all the projects, resulting in publication of four peer-reviewed journal papers and my work on a plasma processing materials during this period has laid down a foundation for my later success in obtaining my first EPSSC grant. In 2014, I was appointed as a lecturer at Queen's University Belfast in School of Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering, motivated by my passion, past passion on biomaterials and also the new broad expertise I had gained during my postdoc work. I began to explore the application of novel plasma technology for synthesis of functional materials, particularly for biomedical applications. I also reignited my passion for design and fabrication of biomedical implants. And in addition, I strategically expanded my research into sustainable thermoplastic aircraft composites, um, capitalizing my knowledge of materials physics and tribology. So today in this talk, I'm excited to share some of the research highlights from these diverse areas of my research journey. The first piece of work I'd like to share is the research supported by my first uh, EPSRC first grant on the topic um, atmospheric pressure plasma assisted, assisted synthesis of multifunctional bio nano composites. Just a bit of background knowledge for the um, atmospheric pressure plasma or APP in short. APP operates at room temperature and at atmospheric pressure. And when this plasma interacts with water, it will generate highly uh, reactive liquid chemistries. And this plasma chemistry can replace the conventional wet uh, chemistry technique for the synthesis of various metal nanoparticles, such as gold or silver nanoparticles. And this chemistry can also be used to surface functionalize a wide range of other materials. So one significant advantage of this uh, APP technology is that it eliminates the need of a vacuum system and high temperature for conventional plasma techniques. Uh, it also considered a relatively environmentally friendly approach and it avoids the use of harsh or toxic chemicals for uh, producing new materials. Uh, and again, this plasma processing technique is very rapid. It can synthesis nanoparticles within just minutes. And also it can achieve nanomaterials dispersion with just through electrostatic stabilization, hence eliminated the use of surfactant or capping agent to maintain the nanomaterials dispersion. So in my first uh, EPSRC ground, I further explored the um, this APP technology in the synthesis of functional nanocomposites and hybrid materials. So one of the initial ideas I in, in investigated was introducing materials from other families into the reaction system alongside with the um, synthesis of metal nanoparticles. And the first the material I picked is carbon nanotube from the nanocarbon family for their unique multifunctionality and huge potential in biomedical applications. Both carbon nanotubes and gold nanoparticles have gathered significant interest in the biomedical field, uh, such as cancer therapies, drug delivery, and bioimaging, etc. 
With this in mind, my objective was to create a hybrid material that combines both carbon nanotubes and gold nanoparticles using this APP plasma technology. And the aim was to harness the synergistic effect of these two materials. So through the uh, APP technique, we successfully synthesized the gold CNT hybrid material, where the gold nanoparticles were attached to the surface of the carbon nanotubes via its surface functional groups. Moreover, we demonstrated that this hybrid material exhibits a significantly enhanced photothermal conversion effect compared to either pure gold nanoparticles or pure CNTs. That is, when we exposed our sample to a near-infrared laser, the hybrid material can efficiently absorb the light and convert it into heat, resulting in a rapid change, rapid increase in temperature to above 45 degrees C in about uh, 40 seconds. And this uh, property makes the hybrid material uh, highly suitable for potential applications such as minimum invasive cancer hypothermia therapy or for solar, solar, uh, solar energy conversion. We are delighted our pioneering research showcased the potential of APP plasma technology for creating novel composite materials. And my team is excited to extend this versatile platform technology to a broader range of materials. So in this follow-on study, we focused on exploring the application of graphene oxide, another functional material from the nanocarbon family, in combination with gold nanoparticles again, to create a gold graphene oxide nanocomposite. Our goal here was to demonstrate their efficacy for biosensing applications, specifically surface enhanced Raman spectroscopy or SIRS sensing. We may know that graphene oxide possess unique structural and excellent mechanical properties. Well, uh, it also rich in surface functional groups. And these functional groups facilitate its dispersion in water and enhances biocompatibility. When graphene oxide is combined with gold nanoparticles, the resulting composite can harness the localized surface plasma resonance properties of gold, along with the enhanced electron transfer within the graphene oxide structure. And this combination makes the source sensing possible. So as de depicted in this figure, we the, the gold and the graphene oxide and the composite we synthesized can result in a remarkable enhancement of Raman signal. And the detection limit reaches impressive level of 10 to the power of minus 4 milligram per milliliter. This enables the rapid cost-effective and sensitive analysis of chemicals for biosensing applications. In addition to combining plasma synthesized mito nanoparticles with nanocarbons, I'm also interested in exploring the potential of this plasma technology for producing polymer matrix-based uh, composites, particularly water-soluble polymers such as hydrogels which also find extensive applications in the biomedical field. The production of polymer composites poses several challenges, including achieving effective dispersion of nanoparticles and also ensuring good compatibility at the nanoparticle and matrix interface. Most hydrogel-based nanocomposites have been created through sequential mixing of pre-synthesized nanoparticles with hydrogels. However, this approach re often results in nanoparticle agglomeration and inhomogeneous distribution. To address these challenges, I have explored the potential of our plasma technology for exposing polymers or monomers and the metal salt precursor together to the highly reactive plasma chemistry. And this together enables the electrostatic stabilization of a colloid system or the formation of a highly desirable interface chemistry within the composite system. So here this slide highlights the successful synthesis of a polyvinyl alcohol or PVA-based nanocomposites incorporating gold, silver, and gold-silver alloy nanoparticles. We also demonstrated that the resulting metal hydrogen composites can effectively leverage the unique properties of each constituent material and have been used for potential applications 
such as antimicrobial treatment and photothermal conversion applications. And being the first group to demonstrate the feasibility of APP plasma in the synthesis of functional polymer composites, our contribution has been recognized by the top ranking plasma journal, Plasma Processes and Polymers, and has been chosen as the cover article in one of its 2018 issues. Using a similar protocol, we have also successfully synthesized a magnetic thermal responsive hydrogel composite. In this case, iron oxide magnetic nanoparticles were synthesized in situ within a thermal responsive hydrogel. The resulting magnetic hydrogel composites exhibit a remarkable reversible phase change property at about 37 degrees. And this unique characteristic opens up the possibility of potential applications such as uh, minimum invasive cancer magnetic hypothermia. So how does this uh, magnetic hypothermia work is that at the room temperature, the composite is in the liquid state and that allows for its easy injection into the tumorous site. And once exposed to the body temperature of 37, the composite will undergo a phase transition from liquid to semi-solid gel, and hence immobilizing the magnetic particle at the tumorous site. And by applying a external AC magnetic field, the magnetic particles will generate heat, which can be used to ablate or kill the cancer cells. And uh, it's with pleasure that this piece of work has been featured by Advanced Science News website, underscoring its research potential and significance in the field. Apart from deploying various uh, synthetic polymers for creating our functional composite system, we also made an intriguing discovery during our research involving natural degradable polymers such as ketosin. Ketosin derived from uh, natural materials such as chain found in abundant natural resources like shells, and it's a natural polymer with unique properties. Through our well-established plasma technique, we successfully synthesized a silver ketosin composite and demonstrated its effectiveness against uh, antimicrobial applications. An uh, interesting observation emerged from this study is that the plasma treatment itself can also significantly modify the chemical structure of ketosin and consequently influencing its physical and mechanical properties. For example, can be seen from these stress drain curves, a mere five minute treatment with the plasma can remarkably, remarkably enhance the toughness and uh, ductility of the neat ketosin film. And additionally, the water sensitivity of the ketosin has been altered due to the cross-linking induced by the plasma chemistry. So as shown in this photo here, uh, the previously highly soluble polymer ketosin can now achieve a much better stability in water and it's possible to tailor its degradation profile by adjusting the plasma processing parameters. And this finding opens up the avenue for further exploration, such as the processing of a wide range of natural degradable polymers, enabling the modification of their chemical composition, physical characteristics, mechanical properties, and degradation profiles. And this would broaden their potential application in wide range of sustainable polymer materials. In the preceding section, uh, session, my uh, primary focus was on uh, utilizing plasma technology for the in-situ synthesis of nanocomposites with diverse biomedical applications. Uh, however, it is worth noting that many of these nanocomposites may not process robust mechanical properties, and therefore their application might be limited. So given my passion, past passion, and prior involvement in biomedical implant research, I embarked on a journey to look at innovative approaches for incorporating the wide range of functional materials I have delved into over the years onto developing novel biomedical implants. So in this part of the talk, I will present two case studies that exemplify the integration of polymer composites or functional nanocomposites and showing their captivating multifunctionality in the context of bone implants. So in this study, 
I utilized two materials that I previously worked with during my plasma research, that is a graphene oxide and ketosin. The objective was to develop a novel composite coating for porous bone implants. And the concept behind this design uh, is to create an implant system that can fill the bone defects, facilitate bone ingrowth into its porous structure, and additionally, the composite coating can offer multifunctions such as drug release, infection control, photosomal therapies, uh, which would potentially target challenging bone diseases such as primary bone cancer or severe uh, bacterial bone infections. To achieve this, we took advantages of the opposite charges of graphene oxide and ketosin and enabled a layer-by-layer -layer self assembly through the electrostatic attraction process to form a layer-by-layer -layer hybrid coating structure on the surface of a porous scaffold. On the other hand, both graphene oxide and ketosin process exception, uh, exceptional drug loading and delivery capability, making our composite coating suitable for the loading and the delivery of single or two different drugs. Furthermore, our composite coating exhibits it a uh, unique pH sensitivity, which allows us to um, utilize the local pH change um, as a smart switch to regulate the drug release. And also our um, composite coating also have other uh, wide range of fun multifunctionalities, including antibacterial uh, effect and also photothermal conversion capability. And also it shows it's a uh, biocompatible. Additionally, this coating can be applied to a wide range of substrates, including 3D printed tissue scaffold. And we are thrilled to share that this work has been selected as the cover article by the editor of Applied uh, Materials and Interfaces in 2019. Yeah, in another study, we focus on the development of multifunctional composites for the repair of load bearing cartilage. Unlike hard bone tissue, damaged cartilage, especially load bearing cartilage, cannot undergo a natural healing process. Uh, natural cartilage is characterized by its high water content, which can contribute up to 80% of its wet weight. To address this, we designed a cartilage replacement implant utilizing glass, uh, glycerol modified PVA to enhance the water retention. Uh, additionally, we reinforced the hydrogel by incorporating a 3D printed PCL graphene nanoplatelet composite scaffold to enhance the overall mechanical properties of the scaffold system. The, the implant we developed successfully achieved the mechanical and lubrication properties that are comparable to uh, natural cartilage, and also it offers excellent biocompatibility. Additionally, it exhibits high water retention and low cell adhesion, which are highly desirable for cartilage applications. Furthermore, the incorporation of the graphene uh, again enabled this stimuli responsive uh, drug release properties, uh, which can be controlled by laser irradiation. And we are delighted that this work has been featured as the top page graphics on the NPG Asia Materials Journal website under the Nature Publishing Group in 2020. In the final few minutes, I would like to uh, provide a brief overview of our latest research on the um, thermoplastic, a uh, fiber reinforced thermoplastic composite for aircraft applications. And this project is funded by EPSRC and our H2020 platform grant. And my prior knowledge and involvement on tribology and composite research played a key role in the successful delivery of this project. And it also supported my strategic vision in expanding my research into sustainable composite materials and green manufacturing. As we know that uh, in the aviation industry is striving to reduce carbon emission and reduce its environmental impact. As such, there has been a growing demand for sustainable thermoplastic matrix materials to replace the conventional thermosetting epoxy-based composites, especially in aircrafts, 
due to its potential for ease of repair and recyclability. Despite the advancement in composite manufacturing, machining still remains a crucial process, and the drilling process is still indispensable, indispensable for joining dissimilar materials and creating load-bearing structures. Therefore, in this research, we, the, we conducted the first investigation into the whole making performance of carbon reinforced PEC thermoplastic composites and developed an insight into the material's unique temp temperature dependent cutting physics associated with the machining process. In this work, we first conducted the extensive investigation to compare the performance of two commonly used hole making method, namely conventional drilling and helical milling on CF uh, pack composites. And our study focused on evaluating various process characteristics such as stress force, tooling temperature, chip morphology, as well as access, assessing the extent of hole delamination damage and the microstructural damage. Additionally, we employed this advanced materials uh, characterization technique, such as uh, scanning electron microscopy and DSC to uncover the intricate materials removal and deformation mechanism that at both microscopic and molecular level. One exciting uh, new finding we made here is the discovery of machine induced shear force and the high temperature has led to a significant increase in the pack matrix crystallinity at the machining interface. And this may subsequently enhance the material stiffness, strength, and fracture toughness around the machined surface. Given the temperature sensitivity of the thermoplastic pack matrix within the composites, we carried out further investigation into the machining temperature evolution during the drilling process and look at the temperature on the um, effect of temperature on the associated materials damage. We also carried out a detailed comparative study with the thermal set uh, carbon fiber reinforced epoxy composite and they revealed the significant difference in the drilling performance between these two composite systems. The experimental work presented in the previous slides provided the crucial data for us to conduct our pioneering research on multi-objective optimization for CF reinforced pack composites. We created the first hybrid uh, algorithm combining uh, Nazca 2 and Topsys. So this allowed us to obtain a Pareto solutions and rank them based on their proximity to the ideal solutions. And this optimized solution after experimental validation is shown to reduce the whole delamination damage by 40% and can improve the machining efficiency by up to threefold. Uh, in the final work package, my PhD student also developed the first microscale FEA model that considers the temperature sensitivity of the thermoplastic matrix. And this model, supported by experimental validations, has allowed us to uh, allowed us to de develop a mechanistic insight into the microscale materials deformation and fracture mechanics, both on the machined surface and below the machined surface and their different temperatures. And I'm thrilled to share the news that my PhD student who conducted this remarkable research discussed uh, previously has been awarded the uh, prestigious 2022 IET Postgraduate Research Award after rounds of rigorous selection and interviews. And this recognition places our student amongst a group of international awardees from esteemed institutions such as Stanford, Cambridge, Imperial College. And this is also the first time this prestigious award has been bestowed upon Queens, demonstrating our research excellence in the field of sustainable manufacturing and composites. So in the concluding slides, rather than summarizing the technical details, I would like to share some of my personal reflections and these thoughts have accumulated during my years of personal journey in academia. First of all, as we embark on, um, embark on an academic journey, we need to realize one thing. That is, in this ever-evolving world, one constant 
the one constant is change itself. It is important to embrace the uncertainty that lies ahead. In our next journey, we may find ourselves in a different country, at a different university, or immersed in research vastly distinct from our previous research work. Well, the external ex uh, circumstances may be beyond our control, the key to success lies in, lies in our ability to adapt and change ourselves to thrive, thrive in new environment. Um, also, in early um, academic career, we may face a lot of uh, challenges. For instance, the resource may be limited, PhD student might be absent, funding just seems to be elusive, or you may struggle to access the necessary equipment and facilities for your research. I faced these hurdles at various points of my journey, and they still continue to surface. And if this happened, I think we just need to be brief and be as resourceful as we can and find creative ways to get what we need and just try to reach out for help. And uh, in space of challenge, it is important we do not give up or try to avoid them because avoidance would not allow us to make any progress. And we often find if we try to avoid the problem, the same problem will just keep coming back and again and again. And I think that the big choice is to face problem, find innovative ways to, to solve the problem. And uh, it's, it's important we learn from the good and tough times as this experience will not only make us stronger and better, but also will equip us with the keys to future solutions. And finally, don't be afraid of stepping out of our comfort zones. The most uh, remarkable opportunity often it has outside its boundaries. So uh, I would say let's be courageous in our exploration to new horizons as there may be something truly extraordinary waiting for you there. So with these reflections, and when I look at the title of this talk again, I realize one thing, that is during our research, we are pushing the boundaries of new knowledge and exploring the potential of new technologies. And at the same time, we are also extending the boundaries of our own capability and exploring our inner potential. And if you think of that, this research voyage just becomes an incredible opportunity for one's personal growth and the development, and we should really fully embrace that. And uh, with that, I'd like to conclude my talk. Again, uh, thank you for everybody for being here. And also, I want to express my gratitude to various founders and collaborators who have provided immense support throughout my career. Thank you. Great. Um, thank you so much, um, Dan, for your for sharing your research um, activities uh, and also for sharing your career pathways and progression and some very, very useful tips which we can all take back um, and reflect on. So yeah, thank you very much. Um, if anyone has any questions, please feel free to share them um, and we'll put it forward to Dan. Um, I should have mentioned actually at the beginning, um, unfortunately Dan's camera was not working, so you, that's why we're not able to, um, to see her. Um, but um, technology and online um, talks, that's the challenges. Anyway, so I might start off with the questions as we're waiting for any questions to come in. Um, so you've you've shared with us your research activities in quite a broad um, areas um, in terms of application. And my question was more so around sort of the st stability and reliability of the composite. So how do you find that? How, how stable and reliable are these material compared to, I guess, the pure materials? Uh, it depends on which particular composite you are referring to. If it's a natural materials like the degradable material ketosin, and it's not stable, but it means meant to be like that. It need meant to be degradable over time, uh, and it will meant to be for a degrad degradable application. But for other composites like the the thermoplastic composite that we use for aircraft, 
uh, applications, mm. then there will be a really robust material that can last for a long, long time. And it's designed to, for, for load bearing applications. So they need to have that mechanical properties and needs to have that stability there. Okay. Um, and how, how complex is the, um, the processes and how, how reliable are they if you, for instance, um, synthesize a specific composite? How reliable is if you did that again, uh, you would have similar performances? Oh, yes. Uh, this, this technology is not my own convention, actually. Uh, it's not my own invention. Uh, the, 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 the atmospheric uh, plasma technology has been there for, for some time, uh, but uh, using that for material synthesis is reasonably a, a new area. But before me, it's mostly used for synthesis nanoparticles. Mm -hmm. And um, I think from the literature, people do pr uh, produce reproducible results. And for me, I just introduced a new dimension of adding material from different families. Uh, for example, nanocarbons or polymeric materials into the system. And we do repeat our work, you know, and uh, I think the repeatability is, is quite good. Um, so when you mention about um, applying these materials in various mm -hmm. applications, are mm -hmm. you more focused more on physical and mechanical reliability or do you look at other um properties such as electrical reliability yeah it's 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 a, we call it multi-functionality so it's just because we incorporate material from different families and the composite will it's, it's almost like bring the best part of both so if you, you think of plus, you know a plus b then you must have the advantage of a and b together so the the composite i synthesis usually the process more than one functionality, maybe it is antimicrobial and at the same time it can do drug delivery. Mm -hmm. So it, it, again, it's it's uh, depending on the application we are we are targeting and then we can, you know, we, we can certainly divide material with different functions and then can find, find suitable applications or this is a targeted application and we can design our materials around the requirement of that application. Okay. Um. Do you have to sort of work with or invent new models as well to define or describe the properties of these composites or could you use standard available models which are similar in properties? Is that something you do as well or do you, your collaborators work on new device models? Uh, I'm a, 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 personally, I'm not a modeling person. So certainly, if it's any work that involves modeling, I I collaborate with people. Uh, for example, the last bit of work on the um, thermoplastic composites. So definitely, those uh, mechanic models um, we developed the FEA models is is some something we uh, work together with our collaborators with FEA expertise. Mm -hmm. Um. I'm just trying to see if there's any questions at the moment. Um, so in terms of this area, this niche area uh, you're working on, what, what do you find is the most challenging aspects? What are the challenges you face currently? Well, I think you can see that my work cover as a quite broad range yeah. Uh, uh, of of materials research and also the technical readiness level varies, you know, from the, um, for, for example, from the synthesis uh, of nanomaterials. And that's pretty much very fundamental research, maybe with TRL nod. And, uh, and then when we talk about the, the, the thermoplastic composite used for aircraft, and that is already established composite materials that is currently being used in the aircraft company. So there's a wide span of technical uh, uh, technical readiness level. So I think it's, uh, the challenge probably lies in how do you get across your technology with different technical uh, technical uh, uh, readiness level, particularly those low TRL level across to industry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I, I'm sure there are people, industry outside there who are still interested in fundamental research. But you know, it's how do you get your idea across is, is the key to get yeah. their interest and, and also most importantly to get their support to your work. 
Okay. Um, so we have one question from the audience. Um, it asks, uh, what technology did you use to 3D print your structures? Uh, yeah, we, we use just 3D printers to print uh, our uh, 3D structures. So there are a wide range of 3D printers available. So the one uh, we used is, um, uh, for, uh, for example, let me see if I can find that slide. Mm. Yeah, this one is a particular 3D printer that can be used to produce, uh, to 3D print thermoplastic uh, polymers. So there are different brand, different models of 3D printers you can use. And there are 3D printers you can use to print resins, for example, uh, mm -hmm. or you can use filament. Yeah, so they're just different, depend on what you want to print and you choose different model of 3D printers. Okay. Um, so I don't think there's any further questions. I'm just trying to see. So I guess in view of time, because uh, I did say it'll be 45 minutes, um, I would um, like to thank you, Dan, very much for your very interesting talk. It's quite vast area of research you're working on and it's quite interesting and well done for all your achievements in oh, thank you very much in, in publishing in very high journal papers so um well done to you um and so yeah thank you very much and um for the audience this talk will obviously be recorded um is recorded so please feel free to share the link with others and finally, I'll just want to thank Dan for your time and your interesting talk. And hopefully we'll see you in person. If anyone would like to uh, contact Dan, I'm sure Dan will be happy to receive your emails in terms of any um, research collaborations or any research based questions. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Thank you very much. Thank you. Great. OK, uh, if there's nothing else, then thank you very much, Dan, for, um, for your time and your interesting talk. And hopefully we'll meet in person in the future. Yeah, yeah. And thank you, everyone, for attending this um, talk. Okay. OK, bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.